Please rise. Good morning. We'll begin our liturgy this morning with the litany of penitence, and we will say the opening part together, and then we'll move into a responsive uh, prayer afterwards. Um, make yourself comfortable. If you're able to kneel and that's meaningful for you, please do that. Most holy and merciful Father, we confess to you and to one another and to the whole communion of saints in heaven and on earth that we have sinned by our own fault in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart and mind and strength we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We have not forgiven others as we have been forgiven. Have mercy on us, Lord. We have been deaf to your call to serve as Christ served us. We have not been true to the mind of Christ. We have grieved your Holy Spirit. Have mercy on us, Lord. We confess to you, Lord, all of our past unfaithfulness the pride, hypocrisy, and impatience of our lives. We confess to you, Lord, our self-indulgent appetites and ways and our exploitation of other people. We confess to you, Lord, our anger at our own frustration and our envy of those more fortunate than ourselves. We confess to you, Lord, our intemperate love of worldly goods and comforts, and our dishonesty in daily life and work. We confess to you, Lord, our negligence in prayer and worship, and our failure to commend the faith that is in us. We confess to you, Lord. Accept our repentance, Lord, for the wrongs we have done, for our blindness to human need and suffering and indifference, and our indifference to injustice and cruelty. Accept our repentance, Lord, for all false judgments, for uncharitable thoughts toward our neighbors, and for our prejudice and contempt toward those who differ from us. Accept our repentance, Lord, for our waste and pollution of your creation and our lack of concern for those who come after us. Accept our repentance, Lord. Restore us, good Lord, and let your anger depart from us. Favorably hear us, for your mercy is great. Accomplish in us the work of your salvation, that we may show forth your glory in the world. By the cross and passion of your Son, our Lord, bring us with all your saints to the joy of his resurrection. Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who desires not the death of sinners, but rather that they may turn from their wickedness and live, has given power and commandment to his ministers to declare and pronounce for his people, being penitent, the absolution and remission of our sins. He pardons and absolves all who truly repent and with sincere hearts believe his holy gospel. Therefore, we beseech him to grant us true repentance and his Holy Spirit that those things may please him which we do on this day, and that the rest of our life hereafter may be pure and holy, so that at last we may come to his eternal joy. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O oh God, whose glory it is always to have mercy, be gracious to all who have gone astray from your ways and bring them again with penitent hearts and steadfast faith to embrace and hold, the fa and hold fast the unchangeable truth of your word, Jesus Christ, your Son, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God, forever and ever. 
Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the book of Genesis. When Abram was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to Abram and said to him, I am God Almighty, walk before me and be blameless, and I will make my covenant between me and you and will make you exceedingly numerous. Then Abram fell on his face, and God said to him, As for me, this is my covenant with you. You shall be the ancestor of a multitude of nations. No longer shall your name be Abram, but your name shall be Abraham. For I have made you the ancestor of a multitude, multitude of nations. I will make you exceedingly fruitful, and I will make nations of you, and kings shall come from you. I will establish my covenant between me and you, and your offspring after you throughout their generations for an everlasting covenant to be God to you and to your offspring after you. God said to Abraham, As for Sarai, your wife, you shall not call her Sarai, but Sarah shall be her name. I will bless her, and moreover, I will give you a son by her. I will bless her, and she shall give rise to nations. Kings of people shall come from her. The word of the Lord. Please rise for the reading of the gospel. This is the holy gospel of our Lord according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Then he began to teach them that the Son of Man must undergo great suffering and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed and after three days rise again. He said all this quite openly, and Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But turning and looking at his disciples, he rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. He called the crowd with the disciples and said to them, If any want to become my followers... Let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake and the sake of the gospel will save it. For what will it profit them to gain the whole world and forfeit their life? Indeed, what can they give in return for their life? Those who are ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation Of them the Son of Man will also be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to Christ. Abide in me, Lord Christ, and I in you. Amen. Please be seated. In addition to the daily reflection, well, you might have, I hope you've noticed, (laughs) I should say, um, if you've been on Facebook at all, if that's sort of your thing, um, we have been rotating through the uh, daily reflection questions, which you got in the mail about a week and a half ago or so. Um, And I hope you've had time to read them. Um, If you haven't yet found them on Facebook, they're actually on our blog as well with our website, So, uh, which I included that link in the newsletter uh, this past week. So you can click right on the link and you'll see a whole um, uh, page full of reflections thus far from some of our members of our vestry and also uh, members of the congregation. And I'm hoping they're a a good journey, a journeying companion for you all. 
Thus far, the questions on the reflections have centered on noticing where God is in our lives with a more sort of internal manner, shall we say. They've been kind of a gentle entry into a Lenten discipline. Now, I have to say the questions coming for the next several weeks Uh, are going to turn our um, attention to finding where God is already moving around us. So that could be in, uh, in our house, in our neighborhood, at work, with our family, here at church, at school, wherever you find yourself in your daily life, both during the day and then also when you um, make your way home at night. We're going to be looking for the joy and the concern in these places and people. And how, at times, um, forces within each of us can hold back God's grace. Unless we are willing to repent and to turn or return to the Lord. So, as I said, they're going to get a little more challenging. (laughs) They are going to sort of, what I've kind of um, affectionately been calling this past week or so, calling us to task. Now, um, our gospel this morning did not wait for us to get to that period of being called to task with our reflections in the congregation. It just jumps right there with Mark and calls us to task and doesn't wait. There's no really soft entry oftentimes with Mark. Mark just kind of jumps right in to it all. Our litany of penitence last Sunday and this Sunday as well hasn't waited for our reflection questions in our home guidebooks to to get to that part because both the gospel and when I say our litany of penitence and look over it, if I'm honest with my my own internal reaction, um, hearing it from my comfortable 21st century vantage point, I just kind of go, ugh, yike, this is kind of hard, makes me a little uncomfortable. Do I really have to do this? The phrase, comfort the afflicted and afflict the comfortable, jumps to mind when I hear today's gospel, when I look at our litany of penitence. So clearly this is where we're headed because we've already heard this from Jesus in Mark's gospel. He has already said the Son of Man must undergo great suffering and it will lead to his death and to his resurrection. It's very clear eight chapters in the mark, where this is going to take Jesus and his community. And of course, Peter is not really thrilled about it. In fact, he starts to rebuke Jesus, and you heard what Jesus said to him. Jesus said to Peter, get behind me, Satan. Not that it's not God's mission that Jesus must die for... um, Not that it was God's mission that Jesus must die for us individually. I think rather, if we look at all of scripture and when we read that part, the early part of our gospel this morning, I think rather it appears that Jesus must die because of his commitment to human healing, particularly the outcast and the broken. And it's not going to falter. And you can already see what is starting to happen in Mark's gospel. And we're only eight chapters in. This Messiah is not going to be anything like they had seen or had imagined in their cultural imagination for centuries and centuries for these Israelites. They did not probably expect to hear this from Jesus. Probably made them some uncomfortable, obviously, given Peter's response. And it makes me uncomfortable today when I hear, if anyone, if any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it. And those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. For what will it profit them to gain the whole world and forfeit their life? What what is Jesus exactly talking about? He's not mincing any words. I don't get the sense that Mark's Jesus is really interested in platitudes or niceties. Kind of reminds me of some of the memes I've seen floating around Facebook the past couple of months talking about scripture. One that I saw frequently says, God doesn't care how many verses of the Bible you memorized. God cares about how you treat people. That's sort of the tone that I hear 
um, Jesus calling us to task right now. In love, of course. Now, those people who were listening to Mark's gospel, it was written, standard recognition is around 70 CE. They probably knew about the martyrdom of the apostle James in 40 to 42 to 44 CE. And they probably also knew about the martyrdom of the apostle Peter in 64. This was in their experience. This was in the stories they were hearing. This is a, a personal story with an example of one of the followers of Jesus who literally took up their cross and were willing to lose their life for Jesus' sake. They were in the imagination of those in the audience listening to Mark. So when Mark is talking to them about this, it's, it's, it's a real and present thing. They know someone probably who did it, who lived their life and commitment to Jesus in that way. Notice I didn't say that the early martyrs were Christians. That term actually comes 100 years or so later after the followers of Christ had taken their shared experience of Jesus' birth, his life, his death, and resurrection, and they had been carrying Jesus and an unfaltering commitment to human healing. They had taken all that, they had been living that with several years, and they were just simply at that point followers of Christ. It seems like we're pretty sure, pretty certain, that there was probably some general agreement about who Jesus was and what his message was, and that he was a real person and that he walked on the earth, and that somehow he was murdered, he was crucified, he rose, and however they experienced his resurrection, was a real thing. But then along came questions about Jesus' divinity. Was he really human and really divine? What is the path to salvation? Because that's what Paul's letters are so often about. And then also, of course, what do we do with these Gentiles? How are they in the picture? Now, you see lots of different writings and lots of different thoughts on this. So there's not a universal understanding of what the earlier fo early followers of Christ, how they felt about that. They were just trying to sort it all out. There wasn't a unified message in that um, part of Jesus' uh, growing community, who were still called followers of Christ, the way of Christ at that point. And it took a couple hundred years, and we'll talk about this a little bit later in more detail when we're in our inquires and confirmation class today, but that's the roots out of which we as Christians are born. And today, we are no different. There is some things that, yes, we still agree upon as broad Christian uh, understanding, but there are over 300 denominations and expressions of what Christianity looks like in our world today. And if we wonder how do we get there, well, we started there. <laughs> There's always been these conversations and expressions of who Jesus was and how you follow Jesus. And so we find ourselves today in our postmodern age as we experience it in America, which um, I don't think it'll be any surprise to anyone sitting in the pews, sometimes is referred to as a decline in Christianity. But I don't think it's really a decline in Christianity, actually. I tend to think of it more as kind of a keeping it real sort of check, as an element of making sure that we, the church, aren't behaving as if we're entitled to certain things, much like the Jewish authorities would behave during Jesus' day, right? Uh, and then much like, what, much like what took place during the Reformation with the abuses of the Roman Catholic Church and people finally just getting fed up and saying, you know, we're not going to be abused like this anymore. I think we are in the middle of the churches, what I like to think, rather than the decline of Christianity, I really appreciate Phyllis Tickle, she's an author and historian, who says, we're in the middle right now, living and figuring out how we respond to the every 500 year church's garage sale. 
So if you go and look back throughout history, the Reformation is there. Before the Reformation is the Crusades, about 500 years before that. About 600 years before that is when uh, the Council of Nicaea meets and figures out who we are. So we're always in this pattern of re-examining and refining who we are as followers of Christ. However you think of it. If you think of it as a decline in Christianity, I I don't know. I think we're certainly being called to task, as it were, by our fellow um, people and generations that we are members uh, in our generation or around our generation, like the boomers and the Gen X and the millennials, the Gen Z, and I'm not sure what the next generation is, but I'm sure they probably have it named. But I think it's it's quite well known that in postmodern America, we have in general general, uh, low tolerance for talking the talk and not walking the walk where Christianity and faith traditions are concerned. And I think that's a reasonable response. I don't think it's a dire consequence. I think it's an opportunity. And so that's what gives me hope. Because I think if we as a church are willing to be responsive to being called to task in our own day and in our own way, if we can find new and responsive and relevant ways to bring life and human healing in our world, in our neighborhoods, in our schools, in our homes, particularly with the broken and the outcast, this sort of thing does not go unnoticed. In in fact, it's my experience, and I'm sure some of you have experienced this too, that people flock. They want to be a part somehow of bringing hope and new life into the world. It will likely require that we are called to task to consider that there might be a need that is literally directly right in front of our noses, in front of us as a church community perhaps, that will require us doing something new will require us calming or uh, soothing a worry or a fear of saying, no, we're not going to live in scarcity, or, oh, okay, deepening our understanding of who our, our neighbors are. And I think when we're able to engage in that sort of deep work that changes our understanding of the world around us, I think that is our form of losing our lives in order to save them and others. Because it's out of losing, there is an opening for growth and expansion and new life. And one in that whole mix of that whole process, we too are saved. So beloved, as we continue to live into this crucible of discovery with our hearts and minds, as we tune our hearts and minds to how we're being called to task through the gospel today in our own world, may we truly allow ourselves to hear the way that we are called to lose our lives for Jesus' sake and for the sake of the gospel in order to save it. O Lord, hear our prayer. Amen. I ask your prayers for God's people throughout the world for this gathering and for all ministers and people, especially St. James, Oklahoma City, and Redeemer, Oklahoma City. Pray for the church. I ask your prayers for peace, for goodwill among nations, and for the well-being of all people. Pray for justice and peace. I ask, you, I ask your prayers for the poor, the sick, especially Al, Anita, Birdie, Bob, Carolyn, Church, Doc, Fanny, Fred, Glenda, Holly, Jackie, James, Jane, Je- Jeannie, Jennifer, Joe, John K., June, Karen, Catherine, Kathleen, Kathy, Kay, 
Larry, Lee, Linda, Luann, Matt L., Mercedes, Mike, Nathan, Pat B., Pat K., Pat R., Pat Y., Penn, Richard, Robert, Roy, Sandy, Sherry, Steve, Tina, Tom, and VJ, the hungry, the oppressed, and those in prison. Pray for those in any need or trouble. I ask your prayers for all who seek God or a deeper knowledge of him. Pray that they may find and be found of him. I ask your prayers for the departed, especially Bill Johnson, longtime member, Charlie Wallam, and Warren Benson. Pray for those who have died. Oh. <laughs> Praise God for those in every generation in whom Chris has been honored. Pray that we may have grace to glorify Chris in our own day. I ask your thanksgiving for those celebrating birthdays this week, especially Kitty Dutcher, Sid Ashlager, and Melitia Santiago. Praise God for those in every generation in whom Christ has been honored. Pray that we may have grace to glorify Christ in our own day. Almighty and eternal God, ruler of all things in heaven and on earth, mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do your will through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please rise. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. You know, we had a couple of bells sneak in on us with these for Lent. We had a couple of bells sneak in on us for Lent, but it's Sunday, so I guess that's okay, right? Oh, oh, there's Tom. Okay, good. Well, welcome, welcome everyone. It's wonderful to be with you all, to have you all with us this morning. Please uh, be, be seated. Know you're most welcome uh, to be here. If you um, have a prayer request, please let me know. Or uh, hopefully you have a purple slip that was in your bulletin. Um, and if you need an additional uh, purple slip, there are some back there. Blake, if you could make maybe a, run, a walk, a stroll. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, the children are putting together a prayer chain as they've already started last week. And so um, they are uh, gathering our, our prayers from um, the 8 o'clock service, the Sunday 10.15, and the 5.30 on Wednesday. All right? So um, write your prayers down. You can take even a few purple slips with you from home uh, and bring them back. And we will put them and gather them with our prayers. All right? Um, Let's see. I think other than that, just know that um, all are welcome to receive communion as we celebrate that here together. You may come forward and put your hands together to receive. It's only the bread right now. Or you may cross your arms if you'd like to receive a blessing uh, and not receive the bread. So it's your choice. And again, Blake will guide you through um, when to go up so that we keep ourselves um, spaced. Um, all right. I think that's everything, unless someone else offers anything. Uh, I know um, the children are working with Mr. Tony and Miss Brenda in the back. We're talking more specifically about prayer, so meet with them after church. And I know I uh, was uh, celebrating a, a Kitty's birthday yesterday, but I'm also aware that Melissa, would you like to come forward and receive a birthday blessing? I know this was a this was a major tradition in your home parish. What was your home parish's name in Puerto Rico? Incarnation. Okay. So, and I grew up in a parish um, that would always have people for birthdays, anniversaries, or even baptismal anniversaries come forward and receive a blessing. So, um, we may find our way to start doing that here. Uh, but uh, at least for now, because I know you and I have had this conversation, <laughs> uh, I want to pray 
And if you're going through the inquirer's class with me, you know that there are, are lots of prayers in the back of our prayer book. And of course, there's a couple for birthday. So um, if you know this one by heart, some Episcopalians, uh, longtime Episcopalians do, um, please feel free to say it with me. But the Lord be with you. And also with you. Oh God, our times are in your hand. Look with favor, we pray on your servant Melitza as she begins another year. Grant that she may grow in wisdom and grace and strengthen her trust in your goodness all the days of her life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. God's blessing be with you this day and always. Amen. Okay. All right. You good? Okay. Just checking. All right. Okay. So uh, with that, ascribe unto the Lord the honor due God's name. Bring offerings and come into God's courts. <laughs> Nursery is a hot spot back there right now. Please rise as you are able. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who was tempted in every way as we are, yet did not sin. By his grace, we are able to triumph over every evil and to live no longer for ourselves alone, but for him who died for us and rose again. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Please stand, sit, or kneel as is meaningful for you. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you, in your mercy, sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. 
He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death and resurrection and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. And sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity and constancy and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your everlasting kingdom. All this we ask through you, through your son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, Deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Christ, our Passover, is sacrifice for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. 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 May God bless you and keep you, and may God's face shine down upon you this day and always. Amen. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, Larry, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, carry the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Jim, the body of Christ, the bread of heaven.
body of Christ, cricket, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, 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 Mary, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, Richard, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, 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 the bread of heaven. And the body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Fill the body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Leo, the body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, Tom, the bread of heaven. Blake, the body of Christ, the bread of heaven. James, the body of Christ, the bread of heaven. David, the body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, Send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. 
And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you this day and forever. Amen. Please rise. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you.